Oh. Ready? What's up, Dibbles? j Dog back for another goddamn motherfucking interview. And if your poser ass doesn't recognize this guy, then you're definitely a poser. I don't know what the fuck you're doing watching the goddamn channel. We got the fucking living legend, king of kings, one and only goddamn corpse grinder. Oh, yeah. So fucking George. I always do these off the cuff, so you're my first goddamn de virginized interview. So where I made out a fucking list, that's how special you are, goddamn it. Usually I just do shit. rattle shit on top of my goddamn head. So I got question number one, but I ask this every fucking person that I have on here because it kind of tells a little about, about your character. And I don't want the politically correct answer, I want your opinion. For you and also kind of what you think started the goddamn scene, what do you consider to be the greatest death metal album of all time? I know it's hard. Metal album? Yeah. Oh, wow. I mean, that's really hard. Like, I mean, I don't know. There's so many good ones. And look, you got to look at era, eras of death metal, you know. For instance, Possessed, you know, are the first death metal band. But you would not consider them like death metal in the sense of how it is in, in modern times, you know. Like, obviously, Possessed and Dying Fetus, it's two different kind of things. Um, but that's death metal record. I mean, you know, there's Altars of Madness. There's the first Deicide record. There's Slowly We Rot, you know. Um, I couldn't really pick one. There's, I, I, was really gonna be, uh, pick, I mean, dude, I, was I gonna, couldn't really pick one, you know. So I thought you were gonna say because uh, a lot of the most popular. Well, people, hey, Scream Bloody Gore. That's what I thought you were saying. That's well, that would have to be in there for me. That's like for me, that's the Bible of death metal vocals for sure. Okay. And of course, obviously, look, I wouldn't be here without Glenn Benton and Chuck Schuldner and Dave Vincent and John Tardy. They're some of the. They're, that's my Mount Rushmore of death metal singers. It's, okay. it's Glenn Benton, John, in no particular order, it's John Tarney, Glenn Benton, you know, Chuck Schoener, and, and Dave Vincent. Like, for me, those are the top four guys. There's a lot of honorable mentions, especially you know, all the people, you know, they're still going nowadays. But those would be the four that probably had the biggest in, impact on me for singing. Like, no, those, you know, are, those are respectable. Yeah, definitely you know, uh, understandable. Like, especially things. singing, like, how I sing modern death metal, you know. Yeah. Because yeah, obviously, Jeff Becerra. Tom Z. Warrior, Millie from Creator, they're all big influences on me as well. You know, Tom, Angel Ripper from fucking Sodom, so. Okay. So another thing too is, I don't even know if you've ever been kind of asked this, but it's kind of obvious one. You guys have been doing this for so long. I mean, you're not an old guy, but you're not a spring chicken either. Hold How up. much longer do you think realistically, physically, you could handle keeping doing this up? Because, you know, some people, when I used to bring up metal to stuff on the channel, they'll be like, well, look, you know, uh, Lemmy did it till he was 70 and died. Yeah. Ozzy's in his 70s still did. I'm like, yeah, but dude, come on, let's cut the fucking shit. They weren't playing aggressive music. Great, uh, great legendary heavy metal music, yes, but not le not aggressive with those vocal tones, and they damn sure weren't doing goddamn fucking windmills on stage. No, uh, so what do no. you think, like, realistically? Like, do, do you think you have another 10 years in you? I mean... Yeah, look, I feel fine. Neck feels fine. As long as that stays stays good and that's the big thing is that is the neck i don't know if i would you know i know tom mariah with slayer were, were, were you know doing their final tour uh he had said that part of the joy of, of playing was the headbanging he loved the headbanging to the music and whatnot and that uh he um once once he couldn't do that because he had the neck surgeries and whatnot it took the joy away you know um yeah i feel the same way because i feel the headbanging that i do on stage it's not so much just like, okay, this is what I have to do. It's just a feeling. I never wanted to be on stage, like, drinking water, walking around. No, I hate around. that shit. A lot of I love this headbanging and then singing the songs. And, yeah, I, I, mean, I just bought some wireless mics, and I've been walking around a little bit more. But it's on parts where I know I don't have to just be doing the fucking spins. So, but going back to your question, like, you know, and again, like I said, he just was feeling really like, um, oh, man, they're going to take care of your problem right here. But, uh, <laughs> what, what is he fucking doing? Is he, <laughs> he's gonna block it. Watch. He's gonna, oh. <laughs> Bam, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. Way to do it. Yeah. But uh, to go back to your question, um, I don't know. Like I said, my neck feels good. And until I start really having experiencing some kind of like pains or whatever, I, I, won't, I can't put a timetable on it. I, I would say I could still be doing this in 10 years, which would make me fucking 63. So, yeah. Well, right now, 62. Yeah. I could, I, I feel like I could still do it that long. Do you, you think know? Alex would then agree? Like they they probably feel the same, or you um, never asked. You never I, just, I just think we just we just take it at each album, each tour. I think that's I think that's pretty much what we're all you know our mentality is. I don't like to think of it like that. It's just like you know what we do the next album, we're going to do some tours. You know what I mean? And that's how how we've just been approaching it. And obviously, um, 
You see the camera? Come on. <laughs> oh, hey. I've had way worse. You see something past me? It's a big walk. Literally right in front of it. You're like, oh, that, oh, dude, that, that's the biggest yeah, fucking I mean, douche move on, yeah. ever. Well, I mean, I, I think they don't know, but anyway, no, I, 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 uh, anyway, I, I so, so I, I don't know. Like I said, I think those guys, you know, we, we have talked, we talked about it like years ago when we were like in our late forties, we had talked about like, how long do we think we're going to be able to do this? You know, like how long are we going to have a head, like, headbang like this? Um, for me, the voice feels great. I'm hitting the mic, but the voice feels great. The neck feels fine to me. And um, I, I just don't think about it like that. I just think about it like, you know what, let's do the next tour. If I start experiencing some problems, if there's something where I have to go to the doctor, then I would start thinking about my stage mortality or at least the neck. I'm sure, and I thought about this before, if I really did have a neck problem where I was like, hey, look, I can't headbang anymore. Are people going to come to the show anymore? You know, I, no, I, I think they would. It's just, I think they would. It's just, it's just, it's part of the show. To me, no, it's, part of the it's, show. it's definitely the signature. I mean, you're the king of headbangers. So There's I no still, question. I still think that I, I can do this. I feel like I could do it for ten more years. You know, and if I can do it for ten more years, I probably think I could do it for fifteen more years. But you know, then you then you get to be when you're older and you want to spend more time with the family. So yeah, yeah, it's a hit or miss. There's a lot of other factors involved in, in how long we could do this. But if it's you're just if it's just a straight answer of of physically yeah. with the show. I feel like I could do it ten more years, you know, easy, which yeah. means probably fifteen. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So you don't you don't have any? Know. Have you ever had like an X ray and MRI and that show? No, no, man. I, I'm too worried to do that. Okay. <laughs> I, I know they would tell me, dude, bro, look at your neck. Well, yes and no. If you, you have no, talk, if yeah. you have no pain, you actually might be fine. Because generally speaking, if you have any spinal pulse, for example, I have my my low back's a little fucked up, right? Yeah. And I have pain. It's not like, oh, I think I did. No, sure, no, you, yeah, you know, yeah. you know. So. Yeah, I mean, look, I've had some times where I mean, I maybe went a little bit harder, you know, needs head banging. I feel like, oh, a little tweak, but I've never had anything where I had to go to the doctor to have my neck checked out. Never, not okay. knock on wood, my whole life. So that's one big thing, you know. Like if my back hurts, fuck it, I can still do what I'm doing, you know. But um, as long as I don't have any pains here that make me have to go to the doctor and get it checked out, because dude, even if I felt great, sorry, I'm bourbon, but um. Even if I felt great, if I went to the doctor right now, even if my neck felt perfect, you know they're going to say to me, bro, look at this x-ray, your neck is not a good fucked. idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe not. I don't know. Maybe I invented the, the, the one foolproof, pain-free um, 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 it could be that way you have, to headbang. Maybe the, I did, and I, I didn't even know it. I just, the thing is, knowing what I know about training and shit like that, and, and muscle, muscle stuff like that, you might have enough goddamn muscle in your neck. You have the biggest neck I've ever seen in my fucking life. You might have enough. Up there. Well, what I'm saying, you might have enough muscle in your neck that we're yeah. supporting your spine, and that's why it's, you're not getting any actual joint problems. It's possible. I mean, like I said, I, I've had some pulled muscles in my back, yeah. but I think it's more like I was all drunk. Passed out. Well, not like that. By 50 then, years then, old, everyone's you know, had you, that. You know, well, but I, I had it. I had it. Like even when I was in my 30s, every once in a while, I feel like I'm, it was a pinched nerve or something. Yeah. Where I might have slept on it, and my muscle was pulling while you passed out. You ever have dreams where you like your leg muscles pulling, and you wake up and you're like, oh fuck, you know what I mean? I, I, I so had it where my muscles are pulling. I thought pulled, maybe, that was, maybe is possibly what could have happened. You know? Yeah. Is it? You know? And and I've had that, but not like knock on wood, not the, not here. I, I haven't really had any real issues. More than recently, like, or, or just, just recently rather, I've had a few times where I get like neck muscle pulls in, in, in this side of my neck right here. Yeah. Where I gotta, like, you know, you know, like when you pull muscle and you don't know which way you gotta turn yeah, yeah, yeah. to have it come out. Yeah. And I have to do that a lot. But it's not, it's, it happens when I'm home and we haven't toured in months. You know do you get I mean? any, because so, uh, it could help too, like maybe longevity. If you have it as, uh, if you ever get like any deep tissue massages? No, yeah, my wife, my wife works at a place called Massage Envy. Yeah, yeah, you, I go there all the time, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and uh, and so. So I, she works and she has me do massages on you? She has face massages and whatnot, you know. And, um, you know, I, I, it's not like I don't let her because I don't want her to. <laughs> I just remember one time years ago, um, we had, a, there was a girl on the bus with a friend of ours. And she's like, oh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a masseuse, you know. And then she just grabbed my neck and started doing it. I was like, hey, no, 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 no. Don't mess with the neck. I'm sorry. This is my, this is the money maker. I've never <laughs> money needed, maker. I've never needed to have like, yeah. like, like <laughs> those. And, and you know, we've had it, like Armand on the last tour we did at Dark Funeral. Um, Armand had a masseuse come out. He's like, dude, you should go get it. And I was like, eh, you know, I, I haven't had many like really bad back issues or anything like that. So until I have those, I'm just not even going to worry about it. Okay. Oh, fair you enough, know, fair enough. It's foolish, but, you know. So another question next, I got on the goddamn list for you is, you guys are the, helps every night. You guys are without a doubt, 
and I mean, you may not like to say it yourself, but it's just a fact. It's not a matter of opinion. It's verifiable. You're the <laughs> most successful death metal band in the world. And when I say death metal, I'm talking about real death metal, not that death core shit and stuff that I'm not a fan of, to say the least. But, you know, there's something for everybody. Um, with that being said, is there anything that you have have not accomplished yet that you that you want to? Because you kind of, you, you, you guys um, are the, you're the leader of the packs. I mean, how much? You, well, I'll say for us, one big bucket list thing for the band was to tour with Slayer. And in 2009, we did Mayhem Fest with them. But that was Mayhem Fest. Mayhem Fest put that together. And I think it was 2018, uh, before COVID, we toured with Slayer. and But that was Slayer's tour. Yeah. So they asked us, invited us to be on a tour with the Mount of Marth and, and, uh, um, and Lamb of God. And so that was a big thing for us because we all, of course, grew up listening to Slayer. Slayer is a big part of the reason Cannibal Corpse is here. Sure. And so that was a big thing. Um, on that tour, I got to meet King Diamond. Scratch that out the list, you know, and I met him like at Dockham Festival a few years later. I've recorded two records with a band called Voodoo Gods and Indian the Rock from King Diamond. Recorded my vocals, so, you know, that's that's in line with King Diamond. Um, how much, how yeah. often do you think King Diamond's listen to Cannibal Corpse? Oh, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know what kind of, Dude, King Diamond's from the old, old school. No, I don't. Before fuck that me, is. I don't think so he, yeah. I'm, not, I'm, I'm not really certain, you know, but yeah. hey, I, I'm sure he's heard us and whatnot. You know, he was very gracious. He walked past us. We were sitting there eating. We had just played, and we were in Dallas. That's where he lives. And he was, there was, you know, uh, Slayer's room was in the back. Of course, he's, he, he's known those guys for years. And he walked past us, and our, our drum tech was there, and Rob Barrett was across from me, and we were eating. And I was, I'll never forget, I was eating chocolate cake. And um, <laughs> I had this whole big piece of chocolate cake from the catering. It was, it was excellent. I was eating, I was like, as he got closer, I was like, that's fucking King Diamond. And I said, no, baby face, our guitar tech. I was like, dude, I elbowed him. He's like, ow, dude, what the fuck? I was like, King Diamond. <laughs> he was like, holy shit, you know? And Rob was like, oh, wow, the king, man, fuck yeah. And he walked past us. And I'm not kidding. Five, 10, maybe 15 seconds later. <laughs> are you a corpse grinder? <laughs> and I look over, it's King Diamond. Did you see the neck? Said, did you see the guy there, man? He touched his shoulder and he's, he's like, he's like, are you a corpse grinder? Are you guys cannibal corpse? And I was like, because let me tell you right now, Don't Break the Oath is my favorite album of all time. Yeah, yeah, King okay. Diamond to me, I know it's he's different than a lot of the other like traditional heavy metal singers. He is my favorite all time heavy metal singer. 100% he is agree. The best. 100% agree. I love him, and he was so gracious. And I remember he he was he, was, he, was, he put his hand out, and I stood up and I was like, <laughs> I did the same thing. Rob Halford, we met Rob Halford luckily one time. And he was the nicest fucking guy as well. You know what? Does Hal Halford and actually might like Cannibal because he likes stuff like Emperor? He took a shit. picture. He took a picture on his, and put it on his Instagram of him holding a chainsaw and he was wearing a shirt that we gave him. At, uh, that our our, our our um their their drum tech Johnny Goss was our drum tech for years. Um, he's a very good friend of ours. And um, Rob Barrett had a shirt pulled aside for for. Uh, what did I do? Oh my God. Rob Barrett had a, a shirt pulled aside for for uh, Rob Halford. And he said he gave it to Johnny Goss. Said, "Hey, man, give us a Halford. Just tell him we, you know, we love the Jewish priest and thanks for all the years of metal and whatnot." And so we were sitting on the bus, and the other guys at Cannibal, it was at Walking. The other guys at Cannibal went, and they were on the stage getting ready, and me and Rob were still at the bus, and whatnot. Go this way, bro. No, 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 go this way. Sorry, no, I'm almost killing people just with a with a minor shove. See that? You know? Like George says, "I will but, um, kill you." Yes. But uh. <laughs> So, so they were at the bus, and then I see my, our friend Johnny Goss walking, and our bus was like, we're walking head to shit. All the buses were like this. Ours was in the caddy corner, and I, I, came, I went outside because I was gonna, um, I was getting my stage clothes to put on, and I see Johnny Goss coming. I was like, Hey, Barrett, Goss is coming. You know what I mean? He's like, He's, coming. I didn't, he didn't say he was gonna come over here, and I looked, and I was like, Rob Halver's with him, and he's like, What? And we go outside, and Rob Halver just came up and goes. Yeah, I said, hey, I just want to thank you for giving me the shirt. But I was, and I just went, just thank you for coming here. I can't believe this. And I was like, thanks for bringing you here, Goss. And he's like, no. I gave him the shirt, and he's like, hey, where's their bus? I want to go say thank you. So Rob Halford made Goss bring, had Goss bring him to the bus. So, um, and he was so gracious, and I have a phone in my pocket. And I was like, man, I would love to take a picture of Rob Halford. I'm not asking. <laughs> and he's like, he's like, you mind if I get a picture? And I was like, oh fuck yeah, can I get one? You know? Well, why would you want to and, ask? Because I mean, obviously, I don't want to buy, dude. I, of course, but you know what? I, it would look silly feel, asking an idol I don't, for a photo. I just don't feel like bothering him for his time. He's wow. scared to say. I think he's, he's used just, to it. <laughs> he's, uh, but you know what? Look, it's just a certain thing, man. And he's just there, like to thank us for the shirt. And I didn't want to bug him, but he, he wanted a picture, so I got one. It was all great. I put it on my Instagram. He was fucking awesome. The great, nicest fucking dude. 
And the same thing with King Diamond, you know, like I wanted to take a picture, but I wasn't going to bug him. And he's like, yeah, she get a picture. You know, I was like, oh man, I have my phone. And I took a picture with him and I sent it. Like as soon as he left, he went to go you know, hang out with the guys in Slayer and say hi to them. And um, he left and I went down to the bus and I wrote my, my, my wife and I said, you'll never guess who I just met. And she's like, who? So I sent the picture. She's like, oh my God, that's King Diamond. You know, she's not a big metalhead, but she knows who King Diamond is <laughs> because I've, I've tormented her with all right. the music I love for years. And she was like, She's like, you look like a big fucking kid in that picture. And I was like, oh my God, this is the greatest day ever. Look, Rob Halford, oh, thank you for taking a picture of me. But King Diamond, that was like, that was like meeting the God of Gods to me. Sure. For me, like, as far as like, just heavy metal, don't break the oath. It's my favorite record. Merciful Fate, it's my favorite fucking band. Well, so God damn, man, I feel extra special. You weren't willing to ask Rob Halford or King Diamond for a photo, but you asked me for one. My nobody fucking ass. There you go, man. Fuck yeah. <laughs> no, I just, I just, look, I just felt like, He's just here to see the show and whatnot, you know, but look, if the roles were reversed, which they were with Rob Halford, he asked me for a picture, of course, you know what I mean? But if it was anybody here, that's why I'm here. I'm here to just hang out and take pictures of people. Don't spill my beer, I'll kill you. <laughs> trying to snake his beer. No, no I said don't his spill, it. Beer. Don't oh. spill it. Sp no. Spill it or snake but, it. Um, yeah, look, I, I know, look, let me tell you a story. At, I might have, it probably wasn't that walking. There was a, because we play walking a bunch of times. It's the best festival, man. You know, well, Hellfest is great too. They're all great, so. <laughs> I don't want any festivals to be like, oh, you said that walking. Yeah, yeah, you didn't walk get a shout out, dude, walk, it. dude, everybody knows fucking walking. Yeah, yeah, that, It yeah. is such that a great festival. They treat everybody so great, man. They're, they're beautiful. Um, well, we were um, at walking, you know, an, an, another year, and I was talking to Millie from Creator. Yeah. And I look over, and there's Hugo from fucking. Except, I was like, oh, me, really? There's Udo. And he's like, oh, yeah, he's a nice guy. Let's go say hi to him. <laughs> and I was like, no, nah, I don't want to bug him. He's like, no, dude, he's the nicest guy, man. He would love to. I was like, dude, we, we covered demons tonight. I accept, man. Come on. And he's like, dude, he would love to meet you. He's the nicest guy. And I was like, I just was like, no, no, no. And I never went and said hi to him. So I never met Udo because I just didn't want to bother him. You know, he was talking to some people and I didn't want to interrupt him and whatever. Well, so. dude, you, you're like crushing everybody's dreams. Just like the Disney World dream. As a matter of fact, because we already just talked about that, but you got to tell it on the channel because everybody, when I said, I'm like, you know, I got to. I was like, shout out to John McAtee here at goddamn North Carolina Fest. They like, score me this goddamn interview. And when people, I told on my channel, because I do a video every single day, 6 a.m. I know you're not watching them, but I don't blame you. I don't watch me either. But point being is, people do watch. And I told them, I was like, yeah, I got a, uh, a privilege to do an interview of course. And people are like, holy fuck. Like, dude, you got to have fucking him tell the Disney story. Because they know, and everybody asks. Like, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like, did you really meet him at Disney World? I was like, oh, okay. He's like, so like, tell took George to tell the goddamn Disney World story. Well, we did meet at Disney World because I didn't say hi to you, but you guys well, were there. say hi to nobody. We're, well, I just, <laughs> my wife, we were, I was there with my wife and, and her cousin and her, and her family. Did order a pizza, Jason? We ordered an interview, we're done. Um, anyway, so I'm just playing, all right? It's all good. No worries. I'm Jason. I'm hungry. But uh, the old snake and a guy's pizza. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm, I'm bitching about this guy snaking my beer, and I'm trying to steal some of pizza. But anyway, my wife was, my wife and I were at, at Disney with 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 our kids and 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 her cousin and her their, their family and her family and um, I was just I don't remember what ride it was, but I know I just I saw these three guys, three kids standing in line, and I I don't remember all the shirts. I just remember the Mortician shirt. The Mortician. And I was like, I was just like, oh, man, he's got my tissue shirt. And so my wife's cousin, who doesn't know anything about any of this music, was like, would they know who you were? And I was wearing a Denver Broncos, Terrell Davis, Hall of Famer, fucking jersey. Um, I had glasses on. I had I had a hat on. So you probably would never recognize me. But, you know, I, I, I was like, if they are wearing a tissue shirt, they damn sure know who Cannibal Corpse is. Whether they like me or not, or like us or not, doesn't matter. They know who we are. And she's like, you should say hi. And my wife was like, say hi to him. And I was like, I don't want to bug him. You know, they're just, they're with their family and whatever, too. You know, come Dude, on. we were bugged just being with our family. Then, <laughs> so, so a few years later in Cleveland, we meet, you know, and I tell you, I told him the story, you know, of course. Yeah, like, how the fuck like, would you God remember us? Why didn't you say hi to us? You know, we would have freaked out. And I was like, I know, you know what I mean? So well, it's kind of so, weird that like, I was like, you guys were at Disney. I remember it. I rem when you came up to me and you had all this, all the shit that I ever did to sign. Sorry, yeah, everything. And I was like, wow. Yeah. Yeah, monstrosity, everything else. Like I said, backing vocals. Yeah, like dude, all the side yeah, shit. I, 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 I own all my yeah, comments. I still sign. But even after that post, I mean, I own every single 
Cannibal Corpse record on CD, vinyl, picture disc, everything. Yeah, that's awesome. You know, so, you know, I got, got, got it fucking covered. Um, what was I going to ask? Uh, so, I got a couple fucking uh, <laughs> cannibal suggestions. Not that you'll take them. Uh, but maybe the boys could watch it or management could watch oh, it. And maybe they'll think these are good ideas. Case because you're like, eh, been doing this forever. We've done it all. Ben and all, it's like, what should we do for like a next down or something? So I got two kind of ideas. First idea for you, take it or leave it. Like I said, maybe an idea is something new. Is like on a next album, maybe do it like, uh, you ever hear the, uh, speaking of Mortician, like Mortician, the final bloodbath session, where it's like yeah, recorded yeah. live in the studio, but it's a very good, it's in the studio recorded. Oh yeah, it's track after track. But there, they just re-recorded songs. If you guys were maybe to do an album just like that, it's kind of like raw, but really good sounding. And now I'm just like that because it'd be something completely yeah, I mean, outside the wheelhouse. I, I, I wasn't going to ask because, of course, you're not going to say, he's like, maybe you guys over the years get bored. Like, ah, it's the same old shit. Right, we're just going to do another thing. Just so I th- as a fan, I would like that. And I think some people, I, they might think it's cool as fuck. You know, those type of recordings. We, we threw around the uh, idea of doing a live stream, of course. but um, And that's probably the closest thing to it. We never thought about anything like that. But, hey, I would never say never. Who knows, you know? I mean, we just prefer, really, I mean, the biggest thing for us, we prefer just doing studio records and then going on tour. Because that's the most organic way you're going to No, 100% see it. I agree. And that's what I would mostly like, prefer. Yeah. But I, I didn't mean, know if you guys would be like, ah, it's getting kind of the same old, same old, 30 years, of, you know, whatever the fuck well, it is. Well, I mean, look, it is, it is, there's a challenge to being away that long, you know, and, you know, you get older and you're missing your family and whatnot. But in general, <laughs> um, you know, I would rather be on tour than, like, do something like a live, a live studio record. It's just... It just seems like, well, people would rather just see us play live anyway, you know? Yeah. And you, then you're not, it's not the same energy when you're playing in front of an audience either. So you wouldn't probably capture the raw feeling as if we just recorded a live album. Like when we did uh, live live cannibalism, cannibalism. Which I was going to say, yeah. you are due yeah. for another live album. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I think there was talk about it somewhere, you know what I mean? But I mean. I got the ultimate set list yeah. for you too, if you ever need recommendations. Oh, uh, yeah, well, yeah. And that was another thing. I, I, I mean, <laughs> me and Eric Routine were talking about like, like, we were ever going to try to do a live stream like let's pick 40 songs and then put them out 40 songs that we are are wanting to play and then say all right give them to the fans and say pick 18 because that's usually our set list 18 of these songs or vote on on and the, the, the 18 songs that get the most votes will be the set list well one thing like, like, that's like if, even if you weren't to like use my exact set list one pet peeve i had on the last tour because you guys are pr- really good about doing it in general is in my opinion you got to do at least one song from every album like it's just too hard now. We have well, so many records that, now. Yeah. It's just like, you know, we want to play at least three songs from the new album. You know, we want yeah. to promote the promote, new I, I get that, yeah. Yeah, but so that's why it gets hard because, I mean, hey, we still play Skullful Maggots. I mean, a lot of bands don't play anything from their first record, you know. And we're still playing Gutted. We're still playing fucking uh, I Come Blood and, of course, Hammer Smash Face. It's never leaving, you know. that We only have one song that we have said is Untouchable. In the set it's list, it's Hammer Smash. Yeah, yeah, I can understand that. It, it, it has to, dude, if it doesn't get played, there's going to be a problem. Yeah. The cops are going to be called because yeah. people are going to smash shit. But, um, with a hammer, maybe. But, uh, but, um, Hammer, Hammer, you know, we play Hammer, and I'm going by each record. I mean, we we played Strip on the last tour we did. Um, we played Strip and Fuck, you know what I mean? From The yeah. Bleeding. Yep. From Vile, we were playing Devoured. So um, I was going to give you a tip on that. Number one, like, uh, as a switch, as a fan, I, a fan favorite for me is like probably Perverse Suffering. But okay, if you can't yeah. do that, one, make at least because it's because it won't. We did play Perverse Suffering. We, we no, you're back in the vial too. Yeah, yeah, you still have I'm saying. Well, we, we did it like a little bit later than that, but we haven't. that hasn't been played in a while. And but I, another I, one, I a case. About that one. But another thing, in case if you had to take Devoured on a switch, and if you need it for set time, is that it's one of my favorite songs ever of Cannibal is uh, Puncture Room Massacre. And it's Puncture Massacre. We used to play that one too. We yeah. used to play Mama Fighting Barbar, but I think we only did it on the first few tours of yeah. for vial. Um, we were talking about bringing Disfigured back, but, you know, like, I mean, there's some other songs I would like, you know, that, and we just we just all throw out the ideas, and then we figure it out and, and pick the ones. But we played a lot of songs, most, mostly every record we, we've tried to cover, you know. We definitely try to cover the old stuff, of course. People love the old stuff as well, you know. I mean, I'm, I, I don't want to be the person who's like, yeah, we're already playing my era stuff, because no. I mean, I love singing Hammer. I love playing fucking Icon Blood. That's the fucking headbanging song, you know. So, I mean... I kind of feel like I've given it its uh, my own part into it, you know, if, if you will, you know. No, you do. I mean, still to be completely honest, as Chris far as wrote, you know, so we're not shying away from the Chris era stuff, you know. Come on. No, definitely. I know you got the eight play. I'm gonna, he sure. he wrote some good stuff, you know. I mean, no one's, you know, I, I I I'm 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 totally fine with playing it, and that's the thing. It's like 
sometimes you can only play one song from each record. And sometimes, you know, like I said, tune, we got two songs from it, you know, and, you know, it just depends. Sometimes we play cover with swords and sometimes we're also playing fucking gunning the same fucking thing, you know, and we used to do cover with swords in the board of the casket. So we're covering two, you know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. we're, so we far, are, just, we try to cover all the records. I will say that so far hard. we were missing a couple records, yeah. but my favorite set list that I've ever seen of you guys play was on the torture tour. And that was with Napalm Death and Immolation. Oh, okay. I, that was my favorite set list. It hit every album. Granted, you were a couple albums shy at the time, sure. as opposed to now. And, but what I really liked, I mean, you busted out songs like Edible Autopsy. And I was like, holy fuck. Like, it's songs yeah, I, I remember, was very I remember surprised. We, 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 that was one that was like left field that we were like, okay, we're going to throw a curveball because that's not one that we normally play. Well, that's a, easily a, a one of my lot, fa you know? more favorite songs on the first but, album. But, you know, we've so. been talking about bringing, you know, we, look, we have conversations about, you know, songs and whatnot. And we have talked about bringing back, like, Pounded in the Dust, and Pit of Zombies, and, and some songs. And there's, there's some songs that I've never even sang with the band. I've constantly lobbied to fucking play fucking Mangled forever, you know? And I was like, ah, oh, you know, and it's like, of course, because they played it so much longer, and I wasn't Before, the band. Yeah, yeah. You get fucking tired of it, you know? But I'm like, well, we're playing these other songs, damn it. So, hey, we'll see. You know, well, do, you gotta, think it, do you think it'd be out, do you think it'd be outlandish? For example, let's just say you left off Skull for a Maggots, but you swapped it out for Mangled. Do you think the fans would be pissed? Because me, I'm a, I don't I'm think a super I, fan. I, I wouldn't be pissed. Look, I'd be like, oh. I think there's some kids who are, there's, look, we play some shows, and there's a lot of young people out there, and some of them aren't as familiar with the older stuff as they are with oh, the newer sure. stuff. I'm sure. So, you know, but, I mean, it's a classic song, and, and I like singing it. It's got the Maggots part, you know? Yeah. Well, it's got the um, man gold part. That's yeah, what I'm saying. Hanger has it. But I say it's kind of comparable. That's what I'm saying. Gold. You know, it's like, come yeah. on, man. I love that part. So, hey. And we used to do Shredded Humans as well. Yeah. We used to do Undeadable Feast. And because we did on Vile, on, on, on the, um, I think it was a Japanese version of Vile, there is... Yeah, you re -re I have it. That's yes. the pressing that's signed by you. Yeah, okay, you re-record yeah. the Undeadable Feast, as you said. Yeah. Yes, well, they were going to do it when Chris was in the band, and then, you know, yeah. he was... No, it made total sense when you had a vocal switch. I mean, you know, they they fired him, and I came to the band, and they still wanted to do Undeadable Feast again. So, oh, they did. Oh, before, okay, I didn't realize. Well, they were going to record it again with Chris. No, I just assumed know. it was because we had a new singer. No, on no, 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 no. Oh, okay, they, okay. I think they were. They'd already recorded it, and they were going to do it with Chris anyway. So, yeah, you know, when 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 he got fired, you know, um, I came in and we we did it, and we played that live too as well. You know, so. I mean, look, there's a bunch of songs. Pulverize, that, that's, a, that's a great one that we I haven't played yeah, in a long time. Phenomenal, you know? yeah. Spine Splitter, you know, Jack wrote, Jack Owen wrote that one. That's another one. You know, there's, I mean, there's a lot of records, man. There's no, of course, of songs, and I get so. that. Yeah, you can't play 50 You're not going to please everyone, you know. Well, Trust me, there's <laughs> the people, there's kind of been a thing where people are like in the crowd, and they're just like, you know, they're just like, you'll be like, um, you know, they'll be, you know, free disembowelment. No. <laughs> or they'll be like, you know, they'll ask for, you know, or they'll just say, uh, like, fuck with a knife. We already played it. You know? <laughs> well, that's a person that has you know, to be in there. Yo, it's, it's coming. You know, <laughs> like, you know, I, my favorite is to just go, no, try again. You know, because, I mean, sometimes people say I mean, but it's like, it's kind of a funny, like, jokey thing yeah, in the yeah. crowd, you know? When they're asking for songs and we're not playing, I'm just like, not today. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and no, but, yeah. They yeah. laugh. Well, you kind of have Some people get mad. I've had a couple of guys like, oh, fuck you, man, man. I'm like, Shh. fuck you. You know, come on, man. I'm, we're not going to play your song. Like, you think we know every one of our songs? Yeah, like, yeah. you know, if we don't practice it, man, we're not going to fucking come out and play it. Like, well, what's weird is because the people, like... You're not going to hear the song that you that you want to hear. You're going to hear no, a fucking butt-ass version of it because we haven't practiced it. What's strange about that, that people expect that for Slayer or Motorhead and, you know, bands with huge scoff. I mean, you didn't really hear that, you know? It was well, kind of expected. Like, look, it's man, like, well, we, they can't play every song. It's like, listen, just so people know, we practiced a set list. Yes. You know, and yeah. that's that's the that, that's the set list we're gonna play. <laughs> we're not gonna deviate from it, just you know what I mean? Because basically, you know, like it you wanna at least go over the songs a couple times before you play them live, you know? Sure. We don't wanna go out there and half ass our songs. We wanna play the best versions of our songs. That's why we practice and we and we practice the songs that we um that, that you know we pick for the set list. And you know what? It's come on, man. You gotta trust our judgment. There's gonna be some songs that we probably play all the time that people are like, well, you could take this one out. And it's like, yeah, but you know what? If we really did, would you really be happy about it? You know? yeah. Like, you could take Hammer out and play this. But, well, would you really be happy with you Hammer out? No, but a lot of people would be pissed, for sure, yeah. Exactly. It's like, like, dude, we can't tell or make a fucking set list for just every one person. I mean, we try to make a list that we think everyone's gonna like that covers a lot of the, the discography, you yeah. know? Yeah. Um, but you're never, look, you're never going to please everybody. And you know what? Well, that's just the way it goes. Yeah. If you want to make your own Cannibal Corpse list, get in Cannibal Corpse. But guess what? The five slots are filled. <laughs>
So come well, to the show. Until jo George refers, yeah. retires in 15 years. Yeah, until my neck is shot, you know what I mean? <laughs> Just stay in your garage, headbang and growl, and maybe you'll get a shot when I'm gone. <laughs> All right. Oh, uh, that's what I got I for you. I ain't going nowhere, so, so, I, so I guess you're screwed. So, like I said earlier, you guys are clearly the king of kings, leader of the pack, the top death metal band. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. Next in line, in my opinion, is... DSI, Morbid Angel, Obituary. I consider those probably the biggest death metal bands, whether people like them or not. It's just I would say that's the big offense. four. Yes, you know what I mean? that's what I say. But Cannibal is number one. Kind of like in the big four of heavy metal, Metallica is number one. Well, I'm it's not going to say we're number one, but I'm, but I'm saying it because I, I, I just think I, that's I number one. I think that is the, the correct so, four. A death would be in there, and but unfortunately, you know, Chuck is Well, with gone, that being so. said, when Cannibal's gone, and let's say even Morbid Angel, DSI, who would you say in your guesstimation would be kind of like the next leader of the pack. I think an obvious guy, I had this conversation with uh, Matt Harvey, exhumed, gruesome, yeah. and he said, I'm like, that's a good pick. However, when I broke it down, he said dying fetus. Yes. I was like, but I the mean, only problem dude, is, I swear on my fucking children, I was going to tell you. But here's the problem with that, so. George, when you break it down. That's, I thought, I was like, that's a really good pick. However, John's around your age. So when Cannibal's ready uh, to hang it up, he's going to be, you know. I don't think so, man. I, you know, dude, Gallagher is the most, dude. Hey man, how's it going, dude? No, <laughs> no but I said, yeah, physically, can he now, do it? Beasley's fucking crazy. No, but if George does another 15 um, years, well, he's 67. Okay, if you he wanted a, y a younger band, I mean, I don't know, man. You know, like, there's there's a lot of fucking great bands out there. We just toured with Ingested, you know, they're fucking, you know, awesome fucking band. Um, Storm Roar, a little bit different style. It's more like a black metal thing. You know, there's a bunch of young motherfuckers, you know what I mean? Um, and hey, uh, well, you know, and. That's the thing, like, like, like Castrator, you know. I mean, yeah. you know, it's Robin. You know, Robin's, you know, I, I'm Robin's a spry 21 year old. You know, if I said anything <laughs> otherwise, she'd kick me in the balls. All right. But uh, yeah, and they're awesome. They played yesterday, and I was like, God damn, Robin, you're being kicks ass, man. You know. Oh, is that the first time you heard them? Yes. Okay. Well, well, I, I mean, that's the first time I saw them live. You know. Okay, so, yeah, okay. um, yeah, that's why Robin was like, "Come watch us." And I was like, "I'm going to." She's like, "You're not going to." I was like, "Come, yes, I am." And she's like, you're not going to. And I was like, Robin, I was watching you, you know? And she saw me watching. So. Yeah, I told Clarissa. And I was she, like, hey, she you asked me, interview too. She gave me a one. shirt. She's like, will you wear it? And I was like, I'll wear it tomorrow. She's like, no, you're not. I'm like, I'm going to wear it tomorrow. She's like, no, you're not. I'm like, yeah. Robin, I'm going to wear it. And I saw her today. I was like, Robin, I'm wearing a shirt. You yeah. just I saw you guys yesterday. She's like, thanks, George. I'm like, come on. So, yeah, I mean, look, and, and there's a lot of other bands um, that I, I mean, I, I love that are, are probably older, like Aeon, who, if they were, you know, they could do it, you know what I mean? So, yeah. No, it's a hard pick because it's, it, it's it's if you're looking for like super young bands, I mean, dude, there's there's a lot of fucking bands out there now doing shit. So yeah, that's hard to say either. I mean, good. I don't know. Do no, they have I'm the work not, ethic not, to do it? I, too. I ain't ready to. Look, I'm not saying we have the throne, but I'm not ready to fucking hang them up yet. So you know, I, I don't I don't really think about like who's coming after us. You know, what I'm thinking about you know what we're gonna do, and hopefully we get to bring out some of the you know, new, you know newer you know younger bands. And in Justin, they've been around for a while too as well. You know, so I'm not trying to. You know, so that's the thing. It's like, there's, dude, there, look, there are kids in the fucking garage waiting to kick our ass. You know what I mean? Yeah. And they should be. If you don't fucking think you belong on stage, you don't. Yeah. Go back home and, and, and start practicing again. You should get on stage, and it should be a healthy competition of, well, I told fucking, um, I think I was talking to, to Jason from fucking Stormwater. I was like, man, look, if you don't go on stage, like, healthily, like, going, we're going to kick out of course his ass tonight, don't even, why go on stage? You should want to kick our ass. You know what I mean? You should be trying to. You know what I mean? You should be you know, doing everything you can to fucking impress the crowd more than any other band on the tour. Yeah. No one's... I'm... Good job, bro. Bro, you got to be fucking kidding me. It's all good. Is that an actual phone or... No, it's just a lot. Oh, okay. I think blind man. But, uh... You, still... Look, camera man. You, you still should good? be on stage. Uh, no, but how... Does the image still look good? Okay. You should be on stage, you know, trying to fucking, you know, do your best to fucking, you know, get the crowd, fucking impress the crowd and fucking, and bring new fans in. You know, when we tour with Slayer, of course they're fucking Slayer. Slayer has their crowd, they're Slayer. Yeah. But I was on stage like, you know what I mean? I want to fucking, I, I mean, of course I was hoping I, Tom and I would be looking and, you know, say nice things to me. You know? <laughs> He's like, come on, we grew up with Slayer. But, but of course I want to be on stage and fucking, and smash fucking kick ass, you know? I mean, I don't, I'm not, I'm not going on stage just to be like, Let's go through the motions and play a decent show. No, I want to go on stage. I still had the fire I had when I was fucking 15. Yeah. I still want to fucking be the best, you know? No, you definitely see, see, You can tell, even like, you said, I've had all the shows at Cleveland going and still seeing Cannibal for over 20 years now. I mean, it's clearly you have the energy and the uh, fire still, as opposed to some guys. I'm not even going to mention any names, uh, but it, you, they got the let's get this shit over with attitude on stage. When you hey, get look, sometimes you feel like shit, you're tired. No, man, I get you that. Want to be able, but I, you still got to fucking play your fucking ass off, yeah. play your heart out, you know? Yeah. 
Yeah. So I got a couple more quickies for you, George. We're over the 30 minute mark, and I this is run a little longer, but I kind of make a special. It's all good. But, um, I ain't going little, uh, Yeah, well, random question I always wonder for guys like yourself, because you're famous, but you're not fucking, you know, you're not goddamn Brad Pitt. You know what I mean? Sure. When you go to a place, dude, you got to be fucking kidding me. Unbelievable. Um, anyways, so when you're in the non-metal scene, not places like this, Walmart, like g- general public, how often do you get confronted by somebody like, holy shit, George, Cannibal Corpse? Well, I wouldn't, wouldn't say confronted ever, but uh, there's people, of course, yeah. But, I mean, would you say, ever, if you go grocery shopping, is it guaranteed somebody's coming up to you? Um, It's a good bet, yeah. Okay. I have my own guitar picks from my Corpse Grinder side project, and Respect the Neck picks, and I bring them out to, like, Bush Gardens if we go, or... If we go to Walmart, I always do because I end up meeting people. There are, it's unbelievable. I can't, I'm like, man, there's no way there's this many motherfuckers who know who I am. And, and it always happens. And it's always different people that I see. And they're just like, dude, are you just here? I can count them on. I'm like, yeah, you know what I mean? Well, I'm like, hold on, mate. But I got some guitar picks for you, you know? <laughs> well, who it? Eric told me, remember that? He's like, uh, he's like, yeah, yesterday. I, I never, he's like, oh, you never seen those? I seen those. I'm like, I guess I never saw those photos. Yeah, you're wearing the shirt, respect the neck. I didn't oh, know man. about it. I was like, that's fucking hysterical. Who put it in there? I was like, fuck, you got to sell Jamie Johnson, man, from Hate oh. you know, yeah. Oh, actually, I was supposed to, he might be, uh, he just emailed me this other day. He's like, yeah, asking about, best, man. Yeah, he's yeah, asking man. us to come out, uh, vend at uh, Milwaukee. And I said, yeah, yeah, well, I'll, Oh, I'll, fuck I'll, yeah, dude, yeah, you so should we'll do it, there. man. But yeah, I told I, him, I was like, you got to have me on your podcast, man. I was like, I bust your balls all the time on my channel. Yeah, dude. He's like, yeah, dude, don't worry about it. He's like, come on out. I was like, so, Jamie yeah, Jamie, you hear this? Corpse Grinder proof, have me on your goddamn podcast. Yeah, motherfucker, fucking do the podcast. Got these motherfuckers on there. Yeah, that's right, goddamn. I'll break you. No, no, Jamie's the best. Uh, he came out. He's like, "Hey, man, I want to do a shirt so collaboration." He's like, "I want to do a shirt collaboration with you." And he's like, "Man, respect the neck." I was like, oh, <laughs> that, that's Jocelyn, funny as man, fuck. Dude, Jocelyn's got the fucking. I mean, that is. Shit, I, I didn't even hear Eric. That, that's all. Like, that's, that's all him. That was all him. I just had to approve it and say, "Yeah, let's do it." You know? Did he? And, how many did he press? Like a bunch? Or? Oh, yeah, you can go go to martyrstore.net right now, and you can buy a respect oh, okay, the neck okay. shirt. There's a guy in this in this show right now. He's got the tank top. They made tank tops, man. <laughs> Just like this. You yeah, can yeah. fucking be wearing a respect neck tank top. He made some, uh, we made some uh, keychains. I have one on yeah. my backpack right currently. Um, uh, some keychains, respect neck keychains. I think some pins, stickers, shit like that, you know, so. Yeah. yeah. Oh, sweet. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll check it out because I definitely think Dude, it's funny yeah, as listen, fuck. man, you should definitely, Josh, uh, he's fucking awesome, man. And he can't, that was all his idea. He was like, respect the neck. And I was like, holy shit. He's like, because he was like, hey, I want to throw you some ideas to do a collaboration shirt. You know what I mean? Like, and then I'll put it on martyrstore.net, you know? And I was like, okay. And he's just, the first one he is, I'm pretty certain the first one he said was, like, respect the neck. I was like, holy shit. That's awesome. And I've seen a lot more of those shirts as as we've been touring more and shit. Yeah. It's South, that, I guess. South America kids had them. Just in Europe just now, they fucking had them, man. The U.S. people had them, man. Hell yeah, you know? Well, because see, yeah, I'm known for having my neck and my head up my ass. So I probably saw them and haven't seen it. So it's like, Eric's like, you haven't seen well, that? I was, like, I was like, I probably store, did, but my dumb ass store, didn't fucking. Martyrstore.net, and right. they have the respect right. yeah, to make sure it's a bunch of other great stuff, you know? All right, as long as they have a real man size, 2X or better, I'm good. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, come on, I'm wearing a 2X, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> and I, I just, I have my, I actually have my respect to next shirt in, in, in the car because, you know, I was like, man, if I sweat my balls off too much and it starts giving me the fucking sweat stains. Yeah. I'm not on stage. I don't need the sweat stains while I'm not on stage. So I'll change my shirt. But, you know, I, mean, I was wearing a respect to next shirt anyway yesterday. So I was, you know, hook up my girl Robin and, and the girls in, uh, in uh, Castrators. Yeah, see that? Robin? And then... He's got the Robin, castrator Robin, out of Robin, his video. Amazing, we'll see how many fucking views this gets, God damn it! Fucking advertisement out the wazoo. Fuck yeah, go check out castrator. Fucking, you know. Absolutely. All right, last but not least. I don't least. know the site to tell you where to go. I'm not, you know what I mean? But just search the goddamn band. You got to fucking Google. Search the band, man. You can find out all yeah, the castrator for fucking Good PA, luck. all female fronted band. Well, they got Robin, they gotta, Robin lives in Florida, so. Ah, uh, well, the rest live in PA, right? Um. I think I don't know. I mean, I, I kind of do know, but I just I just met them this weekend. But I just yeah. know Robin for years and know she's yeah, 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 yeah. and yeah. you know they, they kicked ass yesterday. They're fucking amazing! It was fucking. All, I was like, damn man, fucking kicking ass. You better you better watch out. You yeah. know? <laughs> no, they were awesome. I mean, seriously, they were awesome. Yeah, yeah. So last I got for you because it's kind of a question that I'll, I'll learn something about you, and uh, I'm sure the fans appreciate it because they'll learn at least something, even though no matter how minute it is. So probably something that you never told on another channel. What is something about the grinder? that nobody fucking knows that you haven't told like that they're just like what the fuck it doesn't have to be something shocking but what's well, something everything's that you're on like, my instagram you know? so i don't I, I i you know what i don't know yeah. how's that <laughs> that's something i don't know is what i don't know <laughs> that, that makes no sense i i have no idea i don't i mean like i put a lot i post all the shit on 
on my Instagram, you know, like, I, well, let's just say something. If you, would you put this on your Instagram? May someone else. What's an album you would say you probably play? A guilty to pleasure day? record. How's no, that? Uh, you can put that. Yeah, we could put that anything. In. The greatest hits of Journey. Fuck yeah. That's 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 kind of your generation. Oh. Well, yeah, but still, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Most people would think, yeah, fuck that. You listen to Black Sabbath? Like, no, I mean, well, yes, but I mean, come on, you know. I don't know. I I don't know. Most of who I am. Is on my Instagram. That's that's what I do. I go to Bush Gardens. I you know I play fucking ring toss wind shit. Well, what's an album? And we donate it. What's a, what's a metal record then? You'd say you spend very regularly to this day, probably more than anything else. Oh, don't break the oath. Merciful fate. Okay. Okay. Fuck that's, yeah. That's okay. I mean, I, I play that a lot. You know. I mean, so even to this day, you listen to that very often. There are some records. Look, listen. How I Laugh Tomorrow when I Came to Smile Today by Suicidal Tendencies is one of my favorite all time fucking records. I fucking love that man. Um, um, I love that album, man. I mean, it's, it's one of the best to me. Um, of course, like I said, don't break the oath. Um, and there's a band called Off Their Heads who are, uh, you know, Ryan's uh, a good friend of mine. I, I love them to death. It's not, it's a punk band, you know what I mean? So it's not like something like left field that people wouldn't expect me to maybe listen to, you know? Obviously, people famously know I, I love the band Cancer Slug as well, you know? Alex Story, love you, bro. Um, love you, bro, Ryan. Um, but, I don't know. I, I think everything that I am is pretty much ex- is right on my Instagram. Okay. It's my wife, my kids, you know, uh, yeah, going to the grandkids yet? No. No grandkids. My daughter, my daughter, my oldest daughter will be 19 this year. So. Okay. Well, soon then, man. So, um, soon. You know, well, man. Come on. Oh, man. Hell no. Come to my house. I'll kill you. <laughs> no, I would never do anything right, like right. that. But. All right. Well, I mean, she's 19. And she, she's like, get, go fuck yourself, dad. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Enough. Thanks. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> You're on camera, bro. So, anyways, uh, George, anything you want to add, smash, kill, or at leave off, say anything? Um, end it off with. I'll leave you at the final word. Oh, uh, I don't know. I mean, you know, fucking see everybody at the show. You know, we'll be. Oh, actually, you know, we're playing in Chicago, Municipal Waste, um, a couple weeks. Playing uh, Hell in the Harbor, my home city. Baltimore yeah, I was gonna Maryland. go. I was gonna go to that, but then my hometown. You got invited, like born your boy Josh invited me, so I was like, "Yeah, George is gonna have to take a hug." Well, you know what's weird is I almost went to the to the Milwaukee Metal Fest. I almost did the Hell in the Harbor, and and then came and then flew directly from Baltimore to the last day of of um of the Milwaukee Metal Fest. But this was eight days after we did we did um we did um we did seven weeks in Europe with Dark Funeral Ingested and Storm Ruler. And I was home eight days and I came to do this. And I was like, you know what? And we're doing these two other shows. I'm, and then we have three months off, or maybe even more. I'm not, I, I th- we're working on some tours. I don't know what's happening the rest of this year, but we, we're gonna, we, 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 got, we got at least fucking three, four or five months off. And I just want to fucking relax. I think everybody wants to. We did a lot of touring, like, you know, I mean, we did have a, we did have a decent break from, from last year's Dark Funeral Tour in the US to when we did this, this one, you know, just uh, seven weeks in March, but the seven weeks, man, it's just, it's harsh. So, so it, we're it, just going to re, we're going to recharge. We're working on some other stuff like tour wise, you know, um, and we hope to see everybody whenever we're playing again, come on out. Um, I would suggest also, um, people go check out the corpse grinder for the shameless self promotion yeah. corpse grinder solo record, you know, yeah, you know, go check it out. That's, that's old perseverance, fucking, um, perseverance music. You know, you can go check it out. Go to Martyr store. You can you can buy it. There's bundles with shirts and you all that. Look at that goddamn course grinder CDLP. Go and check it out, man. You know, respect the next oh, yeah, shirt. Man. Check it out. Buy it so I can go on tour. So that's it for this one, Devils. Goddamn George, it's a long. He has more to say than I ass fucking does. So we'll cut it there. Goddamn it. Later. <laughs>